we're going to conclude our study of chapter 9 today with lesson 4, Greek Achievements. The big idea is ancient Greeks made lasting contributions in the arts, philosophy, and science. And the three main ideas, the Greeks made great contributions to the arts, the teachings of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle are the basis of modern philosophy. In science, the Greeks made key discoveries in math, medicine, and engineering. So let's talk about the Greek contributions to the arts first. The Greek statues look as though they could just come to life at any time. That's because the Greek artist wanted to show how beautiful people could be. And that's why before we began our study of uh, Greece, I warned you that there would be some naked people <laughs> in these statues, that the pictures and all that you would see. Um, but they were very realistic. Same thing for the Greek paintings. They're known for their realism and detail. Um, the temples. They made temples with rows of tall columns rounded in the middle so that they appeared to be perfectly straight. The Parthenon, of course, was their most impressive temple. They excelled at writing. They created dramas or plays. And they were the first to write about history. Here's an example of Greek sculpture. And you can see, I mean, this is carved out of stone. And even the way it looks like she just sat down in every fold in her dress, every little crease, every little line, you can see it. So it's as if she could just stand up and start walking. It looks so real. And here is the Parthenon as they think it appeared back in the day. Of course, if you go there now, it doesn't look like this. But the carvings on the west side of the Parthenon show a contrast between Athena and the god Poseidon to decide who would be honored in the city. And inside the Parthenon, you had this magnificent statue of Athena. Um, many people considered <clears throat> the sculptor Phidelis to be the greatest sculptor in Greece. And it was huge. Like you can see just from the size of the people how big it was. Made of gold. The Parthenon's 46 columns are a type of Doric columns. And these simple columns have no decoration at the top. So this stood on the Athenian Acropolis. And of course, the Parthenon was built by Pericles. And it's still known as one of the most famous buildings in the world. You're going to come back and watch this video and this video. By the way, you live in a state where there is a replica of the Parthenon built. Go back and watch the video so you can explore that further. The teachings of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle are, of course, the basis of modern philosophy. Socrates had a unique way of teaching. He taught by asking questions, like he never really gave an answer. It was this circular question after question after question, which drove a lot of people crazy. But anyway, this is called the Socratic Method, and we're going to begin some TCAP review in an online platform called Socrative, which is, of course, named for Socrates. He wanted people to question their beliefs and look for knowledge. And in this day and time, this really angered and also frightened a lot of people, because remember, they had all of these gods and they thought that everything came from the gods, the thunder, the lightning, the rain, the earthquakes, the whatever. So if you made the gods happy, then hopefully nothing bad would happen to you. Well, they kind of thought if 
you questioned things that the gods would become unhappy. So Socrates was arrested. He was con condemned to death for questioning the authority of the gods. Um, he had to drink poison. Anyway, there's a video you're going to watch that you're going to come back and watch. It's kind of funny, and you can see where this line of questioning would drive you insane if that's all your teacher ever did. Plato and Aristotle followed after Socrates in their pursuit for knowledge and deeper understanding. So Plato was a student of Socrates and Aristotle of Plato. So come back and watch this video, please. And then this is the funny one that you're going to come back and watch where you can see how it would have been uh, living with Socrates. So of course, Plato had been a student of Socrates. He created a school, which he called the Academy, to discuss ideas. He wrote the Republic, and in this writing, he described his ideal society. Aristotle then followed as Plato's student. He taught about living life in moderation, in other words, keeping a balance to everything. He believed moderation was based on reason, are clear and ordered thinking. So Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, of which you will hear a lot more about, especially if you go to college. So the, uh, this drawing shows how an, uh, one artist imagined Plato. This is Plato on the left, Aristotle in the center, and Socrates on the right. So let's talk about science for just a minute. Um, Euclid spent his life studying mathematics, especially geometry. So you have him to thank when uh, you do geometry in school. And he is, of course, from Greece. Greek doctors studied the human body to understand how it worked. So I won't go into detail about that. But you can imagine um, just how that would have to be done if they were to get inside the human body and, and study those structures. Hippocrates, that's a cool name, he was a Greek doctor known for his ideas about how doctors should, be, should behave. And even today, all doctors must take the Hippocratic Oath, which goes back to Hippocrates. Engineers like Archimedes made great discoveries such as the water screw, which brought water to the fields. So it just improved a little bit uh, more of the irrigation methods. So this is the end of Lesson 9.4. It is also the end of Chapter 9. We're going to view the graphic on the following slide, and then you're going to come back and watch the video on the last slide later. You're not going to watch it today. So here is just a visual summary of what all we covered in this chapter. Of course, Sparta and Athens, the Spartan culture and the Athenian culture, Alexander the Great, and then today we talked about the lasting contributions of architecture, philosophy, and science, and how that relates to today's world. So here's the link to the time compass that you're going to come back and watch later. And this is the end of chapter 9.